Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Thanks for joining us once again at the start of a brand new day. Now, with interest rates at an almost 50-year low due to the global COVID-19 pandemic, now is presenting itself as a great opportunity to purchase property, especially for first-time buyers. Now, there's been a surge in first-time and 100% bond applications in recent months, but being a first-time property buyer can be very daunting. Director and partner at STBB Legal Firm, uh, Rivka Hoye, is back again with us to share uh, some of the key things to keep in mind to ensure that you unlock your perfect home. This is something that I, I love talking about. We've been talking about it off air as well. Very and you, you, passionate. Are you getting excited? I'm, right, I'm writing down notes, okay? <laughs> I'm paying attention. And this question I want to ask is, um, you know, when you're in the process of applying for a, a property or whatever the situation is mm. or a bond, how far in, you know, can you go in order to be able to back out of it as well? So you don't mm. sign yourself to, to something that you're not really ready for or you realize that <laughs> it's too much of a big responsibility. Okay, so don't put pen to paper unless you're absolutely certain because once you put in an offer as a purchaser and with property everything happens in writing, mm -hmm. so you submit an offer in writing to mm -hmm. a seller and if your offer is suspensive, it's if it's subject to something happening, for example it's subject to you obtaining a bond mm -hmm. or it's subject to your mom selling her house first to help you, mm -hmm. your offer is can be accepted by the seller, but it's subject to something happening. So it's not valid and binding against both of you until that event comes into effect. For example, you put in an offer subject to you applying for a bond mm. by a certain date. So you're applying for a bond and you're going to get that bond within say two weeks. If you don't get that bond, you don't qualify for it, or you got a lesser bond, or the bank just thinks you're a you know, bad, bad risk, mm. um, and you don't get that bond by that date, the sales automatically lapses and you're not bound to it and neither is your seller and you walk away and if you put down a deposit, your deposit plus the interest that you earned on that deposit will just be refunded to you. You move on, your seller carries on marketing the property mm. and sells it to someone else. Um, but if you put in an offer, not subject to anything, so be very careful if you put in a cash offer, you're quite excited, you're not going to apply for a bond, mm -hmm. you've got this money invested or set aside or you've come into inheritance and you're going to buy a property, you put in a cash offer, it's not subject to anything happening mm. after you're putting in that offer. So you're putting in the offer and the seller accepts the offer, that's it. You're bound to it. So anyone trying to get out either after their bond's approved, you have cold feet after your bond's approved, mm. and you're like, what have I done? And I'm trying to get out of it. You're then, you're opening yourself up to a damages claim by yeah. the seller. So Quick little question, side question. The, this uh, five-day cool-off period, is that a legal thing? Does it apply? So it applies at the moment to sales under 250,000 rand. Yeah, so that, that's if now you've signed that offer mm. and it, it's called a cooling off period okay. where within five days you can retract and say, actually, I made a mistake, sorry. Yes. I need to, to back out. And in terms of the Consumer Protection Act, the limit at the moment is 250,000 rand. So you're generally not going to find a property of 250,000 Rand anymore, mm. but if you are lucky enough to do that or you find maybe a vacant plot, mm -hmm. if you've put in an offer for anything of 250,000 Rand or less, you've got the five day cooling off period. Okay. But generally people hear these terms and thanks for bringing it up because they think that's oh, fine. I've heard about some five day <laughs> cooling off clause. I can walk away from a million Rand offer, which you can't. And you cannot. Mm. Yeah. Okay. With that said, let's talk about buying and take or possibly taking over a property with someone else, right? Uh, for instance, being married in community of property. Yeah. Uh, there's a vast set of considerations there, aren't mm. there? Yeah, and I think also find out if you are married in community of property, it's an odd thing to find say. Find out? But because <laughs> what clients, do you mean? Clients don't know. I ask clients how they're married and they, they're not sure if like they're married at a, at a church? <laughs> in or out of community of property. So if you got married in, in South Africa and you didn't register an antinuptial contract you are automatically you are automatically married in community of property. Wow. Mm. And that means that you are joined at the hip, you're financially joined, you have a joint estate with mm -hmm. your spouse. And that means your debts are his debts, your assets are his assets, even assets that you owned. You might own a property before you got married mm. in community of property, your spouse automatically co-owns it. And so it's important to understand that because when you're applying for finance, for a bond, all these criteria that we were chatting about, 
um, you might be completely solvent, you might have a really good credit record, but your spouse might be blacklisted, mm. might have a really poor credit record, and that will affect the joint estate's credit, yeah. overall credit record, and so you might qualify for a lesser bond or even be declined. A final question I have, so if you are going to be co-owning a property with somebody, should you um, think about what should happen or putting an agreement into place should the relationship deteriorate or end? Is that something that you should think about? Definitely, um, with a capital D as an attorney, <laughs> I like things in writing and signed by the parties. Um, you might buy a property with your uh, your loved one, your friend, your neighbor, because you think, okay, together we'll invest in something. Yeah, so this is not even just marriage thing, it's, no, it's co owning exactly. something with someone. Mm, yes, yeah. or you might go into it with a sibling, thinking, yes. you know, let's buy a property together, or let's buy a property for mom to live in, or whatever. So certainly put it down in writing while you're all still talking, while you're all still in love, <laughs> and you can talk about the business. Mm -hmm. And talk about the business end of what happens when the relationship ends, what happens if we lose the tenant, what happens if one of you loses your job and the other one's yes. got to. Mm. Things like that. Got to pick up the, you know, the flack and, and mm. cover the bond. Um, what are we each covering and what are we going to do? Are we going to sell the property if the relationship breaks down? If you can't sell the property, let's say mom's in the property, you and your sister fall out and you can't just decide to sell the property because mm. mom's living there. Who's covering it? Who's got first option maybe to buy the other one out? Mm. And who's going to cover those costs involved to buy the other one out? Um, so there's so many things to think about and plan for. But get into property. I mean, I'm not putting anyone off. I, yes, I love it when do. someone can jump in and invest in property. Mm -hmm. Just get the business in, sort it out, and put everything down in writing. Sign it. Leave it with your attorney. Yeah. And um, yeah, sort things out. But get into the property market. Wow, Rika, you are a wealth of knowledge. Thank you very much for always uh, uh, hearing our call and answering our questions. And in fact, we'll be answering more of those questions on our Facebook live session at 8.10 after the live show. Do So do join us for that. In the meantime, as well, uh, as well you can check out at the Big Small Firm on social media uh, and ask all of your questions there.